Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Welcome back to the A12 discussion. And after playing with this thing some more and thinking about it and doing more research, I think it's time to punt. And I'll explain what I mean in a minute. In the last video, I showed you how changing these output tubes to lower power ones dealt with the distortion problem by putting the tube in the right operating conditions as far as the load line and the bias and all of that stuff so that it was operating as a Class A amplifier. And I think part of what's going on is this amplifier has been set up where these output tubes are operating more like you would see in a push-pull amp. And so you got a Class A amplifier that's doing Class AB stuff without the other tube and the distortion is just going off the scale. Which leads me to believe that this amplifier wasn't even engineered. It was just thrown together with some parts someone had. They had a schematic and they're like, hey, these output transformers are 20 turns and that should work okay. Is it an SE transformer? I don't know. Who cares? It's got a center tap. Hey, it may be a push-pull one. Well, we can toss that onto the screen and call it an ultralinear. It's got so many issues. And, you know, I'm looking at why are they paralleling a 12AX7? The EL34 doesn't need that much current. A 12AX7 is basically two six SQ7 triodes in a single bottle. Electrically, they're very similar. And it actually, one side of a 12AX7 has lower plate resistance and should be able to drive it easier than the 6SQ7 did. And it has no problem driving an EL34. And in my experience, paralleling tubes is never ideal. It never works as good as a single tube that can handle the current and the power needs. And I think that's part of the problem. It's just unnecessarily complicating the design. And, you know, having a rectifier tube when you've already got low B plus and you don't even have a center tap power transformer makes no sense. Other than, hey, there's people out there that really believe that a rectifier tube somehow makes the amp special or better than a solid state rectified one, so it'll sell better. This whole thing is just a marketing ploy. And, you know, I'm sure the marketing guys were like, you know, somebody's going, hey, n nobody's going to buy this thing. Hey, I bet if we chrome it, they will. And so they put it in this chrome-plated chassis, and just like the A50, and this is probably some schematic that's floating out there on the Internet, and they were like, hey, here's we got this off the Internet. This has to be real. You know, I hope all of y'all realize that just because something's on the Internet doesn't mean it's real. And honestly, that's including my videos. I mean... <laughs> I'm not an electrical engineer, but I do think that people have tried my previous schematics and have built amps. They've done the A50 mods, and they're like, Skunky's right, this works. And I want to do the same with this. And I'm just running in circles. I feel like that there is not a solution to this problem replacing a few parts. I think the whole thing is a crappy design just right out of the gate. So I think from this point, I'm going to go with the few givens that I have. We've got a 290 volt AC 
power transformer with no center tap. We've got two output transformers that have 3.2K into a 4 and 8 ohm load. I'm not even going to assume that center tap is usable as an ultralinear tap. We have two octal sockets, have two 9-pin sockets, and then we've got another 8-pin socket in the center. And think about just doing a fresh start on this thing. Tear out all the wiring, all the components, sit down with graphs, draw load lines, start looking at the voltages that we can make out of this thing, and figure out how to make a good sounding amplifier out of it. We may end up not using 12 AX7s. We may end up uh, triode strapping some six, you know, six EJ7s, which are pentodes that I've used in another amplifier that are super linear and use two of them. I don't know where this is going. And I also want to say that the previous video that I posted, I think people got the wrong idea. That's not like, oh, this is the final thing. This is the fix. This is something that I was excited about because I put these tubes in. And when I did, it gave me the results that I was expecting. And I wanted to share that with you. I went and listened to it after I put the 6V6 tubes in it and had the speakers on the forum. And it cleaned up the distortion. The high end sounds great. The mid sounds good. If anything, it's got even less bass now, though. And that's probably because we're running the speakers on the four ohm taps, which is not how these were designed to be run. These were designed to be run as 3.2K output transformers. And so 7591s, they're coming later this week because of the holiday. It's probably going to be Saturday. Before I like gut this amp, I may try popping two of those in and just see what that sounds like and see if there is a easy solution to get to decency, if that makes sense. But I do think that from what I've heard out of this, you could put some 6V6s in it without touching the amp and hook it up with a powered sub to fill in everything below 200 hertz. And let's go ahead and set the sub on, you know, probably as high a crossover point as you can get. And it'll probably give you reasonable performance. I hooked mine up with, a, with my little powered sub and it sounded pretty decent. Definitely was a huge improvement over the way this thing comes out of the box. But I don't think that's the end here. I think there's a way to make this chassis into something with a DIY wiring so you can build an amp that sounds good without having to do all the fab work and you have this chrome looking chassis if you like the way it looks. I'm still concerned about these output transformers. A couple of people noted that a 50% tap on a single ended transformer is just weird and they've never seen that before. And several people have said is, well, that's how a push-pull output transformer would measure. And so now I'm wondering if they got some low-ohm push-pull output transformers that they got a truckload deal on that might be, they could be this big. We don't know. They've put them in these metal cans and then filled them up with potting material. And that makes them heavy. I mean, it doesn't, that doesn't mean that there's like big iron inside these things. There could be little tiny transformers and, and that's what we're running into. And it may be the way I address this is I start off building this, get take this unknown out of the picture and build it with some Edcore 3.5K output transformers. I've got a pair of them sitting here that I... I ordered when I built my last 6SQ7 amp, so I got a pair that I could put on this chassis and start off with 
replacing everything except the power transformer, rewire the whole thing, and then have a known good sounding amplifier, then swap in these output transformers and see if it kills it. And then if it does, we know that you can't build anything decent with these output transformers. So that's what I meant by punting. I, I don't think, guys, that there's a, oh, you change this coupling cap or you add a bypass capacitor. I mean, I'm trying all that stuff. It's not fixing this. I'm, you know, I tacked in an LED bias on the driver tube. Did, it's not fixing it. There's some fundamental issues, and I'm going to end up replacing so many parts, it's better off just starting from scratch. So, sorry if some of you guys got the wrong idea that some 6V6 tubes are like the magic pill that's going to make this thing sound like a 300B amp or make it sound like my uh, 6SQ7 amp. That's not the case. I want to correct that before people go out spending hundreds of dollars on new old stock fancy tubes thinking that that's the solution to this. Tube rolling is not going to fix this amp. Tube rolling is a thing, but it doesn't fix garbage. You can't put $200 tubes in a piece of crap amp and all of a sudden it sounds magical. You can put $200 tubes in a good sounding amp and it might make it better. So I hope people will stop spending hundreds of dollars tube rolling in this faulty design amplifier with the dreams that it's going to turn it into something magical because it's not going to happen. Sort of like the A50. I ended up having to completely rewire the whole front end of the amp to get it to behave. And this isn't going to be any different. So anyway, just wanted to clear all that up. And also, hope you all have a happy holidays. Probably not going to be doing any more videos until the first of next week. I'm going to take a little break. I also want to work on the preamp project some. This thing showed up at the house. I got excited, kind of jumped into it, hoping there would be an easy fix. There's not going to be an easy fix. And so, I think this is going to go on the back burner, wait for some parts and tubes to come in this weekend. Possibly could be doing a preamp video later this weekend when I start working on that, but no promises, guys. So anyway, hope you're enjoying the channel. If you are, please subscribe, please like the video, and we'll see you after we punt on this A12 amplifier. Have a great day.